It is new products. New! New, 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 new. Yeah. Okay. Okay, first up. Print. Printer. Print about simple, simple metal. Yeah, we actually, kind of we will have these very, very shortly in the store. We wanted to update, we wanted to update the photo and description. Yeah. Um, when we get these next, it will be the Rev F which comes with a slightly improved like control board, I think, and also has um, a distance sensor for auto leveling, or it'll at least tell you before it hits the bed. I don't know the details of exactly how it works, but it now has this, it's the Rev F, and we will have them soon. I believe they're even the same price as the Rev Ds, which we had before. Yeah. Um, so if you're looking to get a printer bought Metal Simple, it is never yeah. a better time than ever to sign up and get notified in the next couple of days when we get these in the store. And from what I understand, Brick, the founder is doing a documentary on RepRap. So oh, cool. things are getting weird. Lots of 3D printer documentaries. Um, next up, cable. It's a cable. Now, it looks boring, but it's actually a really sweet micro USB cable. This is a six foot long micro USB cable. And the reason it took us a little bit longer than usual to get this two meter cable in is that we specified extra beefy wire inside of it. So it has 24 gauge power wire and 26 gauge data lines. So it's um, an extra thick cable. So it's good because if you're using this for high current draw, um, if you're using this for something that's gonna draw like two amps, um, so from like a USB power adapter, like you're powering a tablet or a Raspberry Pi or a BeagleBone, this USB cable will have less voltage drop. So it was a custom made cable because we didn't want to cheap out. Uh, usually if you get a two meter cable, it's like 28 gauge or 30 gauge wire. It's super, super skinny. Um, this stuff is much better. So we have that in the store now. Okay. And uh, speaking of Raspberry Pi stuff. We have a new case. This time, this is an upgrade or update to the Model B Plus case that we had before. Um, this case is, it's milled out of aluminum or machined out of aluminum. And it's beautiful and it's very durable and it fits the um, B Plus quite nicely. I can show it on the overhead. Yeah, considering that the B Plus just came out, this is, this uh, is this Well, fast. this is made by uh, Pazdan, and they actually... Um, get, get some overhead. Oh, sorry. Back they, uh, yeah, back it up. They uh, actually do the machining in-house. That's why they could probably do it so fast. So it fits inside, and then it's not quite... I didn't screw it in, so it's not, like, perfectly lined up. But if I did, it would have the USB and Ethernet and then HDMI audio and micro USB and then there you can even get the micro SD card slot. You can mount it. And it has these um, this lovely kind of grill topper. Or if you want to access the DSI um, slash, uh, uh, sorry, the um, camera or display port for this like new display, um, it gets put in like this. It's a nice brushed aluminum case and then you can even get to the GPIO there it looks like there's a little slot here that you can get the GPIO cable out if you want to attach a GPIO cable or a cobbler to it it comes with some mounting hardware it's a very lovely and extremely durable case so if you want a metal case this is one of the few few B plus metal cases available they take quite yeah. a while to get spun up so okay nice next up if you're into drones if you're in the quadcopters if you're into the Iris Plus. We have it. So here you go. This is new from 3D Robotics. It's the new Iris Plus. Um, I guess, you know, I kind of think this is like the ultimate GoPro um, drone right now. Um, it's the latest version of the, their multi-copter. Uh, they're probably one of the best known um, maker companies that do drones. Mm -hmm. So they have a giant community. They have a lot of open source stuff that goes along yep. with these things. A lot of open source hardware, open source and, software. Yeah. And so they this do is, a lot of the development in, in open uh, yeah. quadcopter and drones and APM and all that So stuff. when I think about that, and we had Chris Anderson on our hardware hangout, so if you ever uh, it will just search, just search for Chris Anderson Hardware Hangout. You can get an idea of what's going on with 3D Robotics. So they're an open source uh, venture-backed company. It's the only drone that we, we sell, because I think there's like two basic types if you're someone that's in the drones. There's the just want to fly it and who cares about anything, how it actually works. You just want to mm -hmm. fly the thing. And then you want to kind of understand everything and maybe do custom applications and develop. Maybe you're doing agriculture, maybe you're doing who knows what else. Um, this is kind of the one for you. So more the maker-friendly one. Okay. So anyways, we got it. And uh, this is their second Rev, so all the things they learned in the first round, here you go. Okay. Mixed up. Very excited about this. This is our 1,000 incredible costume and cosplay ideas. We're getting books in about cosplay. It's like oh, a coffee table book. Yes. It doesn't actually, I just want to clarify, it doesn't have instructions. No. It just has 
a thousand photos and they're like amazing photos so it's like instead of going on deviant art you can just get this it has all the best photos ready to go yeah um different topics different shows movies games whatever you want to flip through some of the uh, yeah so um what I wanted to point out with this is this is great for people who do costuming now because they'll get inspired to do stuff and then for the people who do uh electronics you'll get inspired on what you can actually make so one example is these wings right and so it's like okay i want these big wings i'm gonna look at this and get ideas but then since you're in the adafruit world you probably put el on it you'll probably start to think what can i what type of electronics can i put on all this stuff so it's just a fantastic um book that really celebrates and showcases that all the cool costumes color. yeah I have so, it here. it's big it's uh, it's a hard cover too let me hold this up yeah uh, no it's not a hard cover sorry hard, it's, it's hardish a, cover it's a soft cover, but it's like a firm soft cover. Um, yeah. But yeah, there's just like tons, and it you know there's the name of the costume, the person who made it. Um, like this is all the Halo costumes. Here's like, you know, 50 Zelda princess costumes. Um, yeah. Yeah, this is great. And it's really neat because I, I like that it just combines everything. I like it's all about the the makers themselves. They're part of this, but they're also um, picking a character that they really admire. Sometimes they're ones that they've made up. Yeah. And uh, it's just really beautiful stuff. The photography has to be great. So it kind of combines a little bit of everything. Fashion in a weird way. So, all right. Next up. What's this? Ah, this know. is the um, JTAG base, which is, uh, sorry, the JLink base. This is a JTAG SWD programmer and debugger. It's from Seger, which is a company that is like, this is pretty much what they do. Um, if you are interested in doing stuff with ARM chips of any sort, uh, chances are you'll need a, you know, a JTAG programmer. And even though you can kind of make a cheap one from like an FTDI chip or whatever, um, usually it doesn't have like debug points or it doesn't support every single chip or it doesn't do SWD. So the, the JLink is like the gold standard of ARM programming and debugging um, dongle things. It uses USB and it has a JTAG port there and a cable. You know, basically any chip you're using, it will be supported by the J-Link. It is like the standard. So, you, and it, it comes with free firmware updates. So when you plug it in and you run the software, it'll like get the latest firmware for you and um, download it. So you don't have to worry about like, oh, you know, do I have the latest firmware? Does it support the latest chip? Um, and we have two versions and the base is the professional version. And Seger is really nice. What they did is they have the EDU version, which we've already stocked and the base version. And the EDU version is for nonprofit, um, educational, student work. Like you're not selling the project you're working on, you're just reverse engineering something for a hobby or you're programming a chip to learn ARM or whatever. But if you are a developer and you're making money off your product or you're selling it or you're a contractor or whatever, basically there's some sort of money or company involved, the base is what you should get. It's actually the same exact product. Um, I mean, it, the EDU one knows it's EDU, the base one knows it's base, like the, the software will tell you and it'll say like, hey, by the way, you're using the EDU version. They have the same functionality, but you know, they're very kind in not requiring you to fax them an ID. And you should reward them by not being these kinds of jerks, like they're not punishing students by um, upgrading your EDU to a base or buying a base if you're, if you're going to make a product or you know, use it for a company purpose. Um, we don't check your email address. We don't check your ID. Uh, we trust you. So That's do the cool. right thing and, and treat them kind because they made the best tool in the known universe for this stuff. I use mine almost every day now, and it's awesome. Really? Yeah. That's high praise. High right. praise. Okay. And the star of the show this week, beside you, is a new board. So new. This no, no, is no, no, the no, no, new no. audio effect soundboard. We have... Um, this is the, the next one. We already had one in the store, but this one is even better. And what makes this one better is it has a built-in audio amp. Yeah. So we already have a bunch of great Class D audio amps in the store, and we previously had a version that had just headphone out. This time we now have the audio effect board with a two Class D, sorry, a Class D stereo two-watt output. It can drive speakers, and it can be very loud. Um, like, you really don't need another amplifier. Like, this is kind of it. You can use 8 ohm or 4 ohm speakers. It can basically get up to 3 watts if you really, if you don't mind a little bit of distortion, like 10 t 10% THD distortion. And uh, I'll explain what the audio board is because this might be the first time yeah. you're learning about it. I, I have some questions on behalf of the world okay. with this. Uh -huh. So I just want to look at this. If I understand this correctly. I you, haven't said anything yet. You don't need 
A microcontroller. There's no the microcontroller's already on there. Uh, you don't uh, need an external one. So you no don't need Arduino. No Arduino, nothing. No programming. Okay. And the reason why we have one with and without an amp is some people will want to build an amplifier because they want to. Some people want to use like a, a portable um, speaker, or they want to use a really big amplifier, or they want to actually just have it be a headphone output. So for those people, we don't. We just have a headphone jack. You know, you can plug into your stereo or a power like USB speaker. Um, like uh, Phil B had, you know, a, a portable speaker that clipped onto his belt. He wanted to use that. So use the headphone version. Um, it's a little bit less expensive because we don't have the amplifier built in. Mm. But for most projects, you might want, you know, if you want to have a speaker, you should get the one with the amp because it's a five bucks more, and it just, you know, just basically connect any speaker you find, and it will just work. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to shut. So you're giving people choices. There's just choices. Okay, we're going to so do me, we're going to do a live demo. I'll do the demo, but I'll actually just also just talk about um, what this is, and I'm going to use this book just to get the speakers off the desk so they don't rattle the desk. Um, yeah. So this is the audio board, this is what it is, and I'm pairing it with three AA batteries over here, and I have it um, soldered in on a breadboard with all these buttons, but you can use yeah. any kind of trigger, and a trigger is just a, a button oh, whenever you... You probably move around that yeah. There you go. Whenever you um, press the button, it triggers a sound, and there's 11 triggers down here, and then there's a couple of buttons, like, you know, you want to change the volume, or you want to... Um, uh, so this is like audio output, or if you want to use the um, debug output, there's a serial command if you want. Um, and here's the two terminal blocks where the speakers are connected, and this is going to be a little loud, so I'm actually going to turn the speakers kind of over, because I don't want to make it too loud yet. Um, and when you turn it on, just power it with a couple batteries. Um, you can press any of these triggers, and each trigger, by naming the file, um, the number, it will play when that trigger is pressed. So if you have track nine, then when you press the ninth button, track nine, it just says track nine. That's the, okay. I don't want to use it. And, and what did you name the file? Uh, T09.wave or okay. aug. So you can compress or uncompressed audio. And you can basically, whenever you press the button, it plays audio. Track eight, track seven, track six latching. Tra and then we have special effects that you can do with the board as well. So for example, I think on um, pin number one, it's random mode. So every time you play it, you can have it have nine different, 10 different audio tracks, and it will randomize which one plays when you press that button. So let me try pressing pin one. Track one, random zero. So that is the zeroth file. Track one, random one. Random one, this time it's like. Track one, random two. Wow, it's playing them all in order. Okay, well, sometimes if it's random, it's track actually going to play them in order. Random three, track one, random four, track one, random one, track Wait, one, why is it? random two. <laughs> it's like the one time it's playing randomly. Um, we also have a next mode. I think it's... Track three. Uh, track five. Track five dot zero. This one does play in order each track time. Track five dot okay. one. Track 5.2. Random mode usually is random. I don't know why it's not random right now. Um, yeah. And then we also have um, a, a hold to play mode, so it only plays when you hold the button down. Track 4. So as soon as I let go, it stops playing. Track 4 hold. And then we also have a latching mode that will start playing as soon as you press the button, and then when you let go, it'll keep playing it, and when you press it again, it will stop. Track 6 latching. Track 6 latching. So it's good for effects where you want to have a sound start, play, and loop when you press a button and then you don't have to keep holding it down. So with all these different effects and the different buttons, you can basically make most projects and props and um, whatever sound effect thing yeah. you want. Um, and with the built-in amplifier, you actually like don't need anything but a couple batteries. And then we even have speakers in the store, so you can just like toss on a speaker or two yeah. and you're ready to go. And it can play... It is like CD quality sound. I just can't play audio because YouTube will shut down yeah. um, the stream because it'll detect it. And we looked around. Anything out there doesn't even do all this, and it's way more expensive, and you can't put your own sounds on it. Oh, yeah. I forgot to mention that. You can put your sounds on it. <laughs> yeah. It does more than just say these numbers. Right. Well, <laughs> you can put any sounds you want on it. I have to do like, something that you can yeah. just tell which And it shows up as a USB drive when you when plug, you plug it, in. it in ah you just drag your files over so you just drag your files over and we yeah. have a tutorial on how to you know generate your files and drag them over and you can compress audio 
And with compressed audio, we have a 16 megabyte version, so it can play about 16 minutes of stereo compressed audio, like high quality. Yeah. Um, and we have a two megabyte version, which is what most people probably need for sound effects, and it can play a couple minutes of compressed audio or like half a minute of uncompressed audio. Yeah. So I predict. And super easy. Yeah. Next year, you're going to see all the Ghostbuster Proton packs and every every thing that doesn't make any audio that's a yeah. prop or something use this. Yeah. Anytime I you want to so. have like a wearable or a project that it just it something happens like a sensor and it plays audio and we have projects that you can also trigger you can trigger it from microcontroller just by toggling the yeah. pin but for a lot of people having a switch um, or like a sensor or you know it doesn't have to be a button it can be like um, two conductive pieces of fabric or a vibration switch or a tilt switch or you know velcro or something something anything that turns on and off that you can connect or disconnect conductive stuff can be used okay. as a trigger. Do you and with that, capacitive that is new products. Okay. Good work, Lady Edit.